Hello, and welcome back to Satisfactory. And uh, at the end of our last episode, we started discussing this uh, priority splitter um, that well, I've seen some people use on YouTube and whatnot, uh, where you input a, a pile of stuff into the bottom, which is a row of splitters, and then due to the action of elevating them up to these mergers, you end up with most of your material coming out of the top one, and then a tiny amount, depending on how many splitters you put in, coming out of the bottom one. Uh, at at four, it's like well, three, nine, twenty-seven, eighty-one. One out of one out of every eighty-one pieces, uh, because it splits into thirds each time. So each each splitter is, is one one third of the previous one. Um, but we also wanted to try and use this for a priority merger as well. And I think we can uh, if we if we do it right. First of all, I do want to take it out to five instead of just four. Uh, that gives us a little bit smaller of a percentage that, that doesn't work out uh, as far as a splitter goes. But it also gives us a little bit more of a percentage as far as the inputs go. So assuming you have even inputs, assuming you have 60 coming into both inputs, um, which on, on the splitter you wouldn't have this upper input. But assuming you did, uh, what would happen here is, so 60 comes in, uh, 20 goes up each splitter, 20 proceeds down the line to then get split and merged later. Um, what happens to this line is, because the merger is going to take a third from each input, you only end up using 20 out of this line, assuming this line is full. So the priority is on the the line going into the splitter over the line going to the merger. It's not perfect, uh, but it should accomplish what we need. And worst case, if not, I can always uh, belt the this output here into a shredder, uh, and that'll handle it. And this is for the silica. So uh, in reality, though, what we're going to have coming in is 80 from the uh, bauxite refining way down there along the bus. And we're going to have 120 coming in from the actual silica processing. And we want the 80 to be priority over the 120. So we're going to use all Mark II belts in this case. Um, no, wait. No, we're not. Because we need to consume, ideally, all 200-ish uh, of that. I, I'm rounding the numbers here. It's, it's 80 and like 117 or something. But we'll say 80 and 120. So that means we're going to be producing, or we're going to be... Yeah, producing 200 and we actually need to consume all 200 so the objective of this is not to really consume the 80 over the 120 or try and force it down to 80 but if we are limited on our uh, output that I want the 80 to take priority over the 120 so in that case I want the 80 here on the bottom because then uh, about a third of it would go up each lift which means that's like 27 26.67 and a third would continue on and get merged in with this belt now since it's going to be all mark three belts in here because we need to be able to handle the output of 200 anyway that means that this one's going to consume the entire thing but as it starts getting backed up or if it starts getting backed up then i definitely want two-thirds of this input to be used before more than a third of this input is used so that's kind of the idea. Um, but we're going to actually leave this for now because, as I was mentioning in the last episode, I am pretty starved out of some of the base materials. So we actually need to start working again on making the um, the plates and the rods so that we have those to be able to make Mark I belts. Uh, because we're not going to get very far without Mark I belts and also things like assemblers, which well, they actually actually need the, the kind of Tier 2 stuff. But... Um, those as well and uh, and the constructors also need uh, the the reinforced iron plates but we need the we need the um, the plates in order to make reinforced iron plates so we need to have that in rotors as well so we're gonna go actually downstairs where I've done some destruction quite a bit of destruction actually and I've torn up all of the iron plate and rod smelting well, all the smelting for them and then all of the constructors making them from this giant area here 
And what we're going to do first, though, is we're going to set up, starting in this end, uh, just spacing. We're not going to actually hook them all up yet, but just spacing for the um, the the fused quick wire, the wire, the cable, and then get into the iron. And that should cover us for all of our basics because we already have our copper sheets here. So let's start out here first with a um, splitter for the uh, for the fuse quick wire sort of input line. Um, this one is centered, and in order to have a centered merger for the output, we can't actually center the inputs. So I'm going to actually start here in this one with the splitter, although I'm not going to put it down yet. Instead, I'm going to grab an assembler. Uh, production is where assemblers are, because that's where fused quick wire is made. Um, I keep turning it the wrong way. There we go. And I think this is where it needs to go. I want to make it kind of the same as these guys here. So it's um, these ones are lined up basically with the seam here, as is now this one. If I can get it to where you guys can see that. With the seam there. And then um, a merger on the output would go, or should go, here in the center of uh, crosswise, of course, and directly across from the output, of course. And then we want to make sure that this is the correct spacing. And just by eyeballing it, we can see that it's going to be. And then we need to, uh, we need to have nine assemblers making the fused quick wire, of course. Uh, so this is quite a bit of assemblers. And I did some measuring earlier and we actually don't have enough space. So this is going to have to be a double row. Uh, before we do that, though, I want to make sure that I place this in the correct spot for the input. Uh, let's see. You go like this. Yes. One, two, three. So see, it's one off from the center of the block. So we um, that's why we couldn't put it here, because this one is centered. And we can't put another splitter on the copper ingots that close. So... Uh, and I don't want any sort of weird squiggly belts. So we're just going to go over here. We have lots of space, so I think it's fine. And then uh, let's put some space here for the assembler here. And I think this one goes here. But just to verify, of course. Nope, that's one too close. Why is that one too close? Oh, that's why it's one too close. It actually needs to be back by one off of the, uh, the tile. Or the block. The foundation. Whatever it's called. Okay, so you go here. And that should be perfect, except that I probably should have done it this way, just to make because it makes it a little bit easier to see. Yep, that is perfect. So we'll stack that up, obviously, to some height or not, but uh, I want to make sure that I can if I decide to. Um, so here we can fit in, and I'm not going to build. I'm not going to leave all these built. We'll go ahead and build them just for the spacing. But we need nine. Okay, there we go. Three. Okay, hold down control, Wally. Four. Five. And so you can see we can only really fit like seven here. So we needed the second row anyway, because we need nine. So the second row will take us out this far. And then we'll have a splitter somewhere up. Hopefully not too high. I need to make sure that I keep this in mind. It should be here. Uh, I think whatever... Whatever product that I bring in to this input is going to have to be the one on the floor. But that'll be fine. Because we'll have this other one up a couple of levels. So I think that'll work out fine, um, spacing-wise. And I'm going to actually take these down, uh, except for the first one in each row. Just because I want to make sure that I have the materials to build the stuff that we're actually going to build first. So we need to have a splitter here, just for the space again goes there and then we should have the next thing we need to plan for is regular wire now regular wire is still fused wire so it's still copper plus catarium so we still need a splitter there and we need to have a assembler there How does that seem closer I think I messed up I did. Look at that. Uh, nope. Delete it first. There we go. Do. There. Yes, that is correct. Okay, so that is directly there. Yep. 
So this is going to make fused wire, which is uh, still copper and cutarium. So I could a have potentially actually connected these guys both to the same splitter. But the problem with that is, is spacing. So we're going to have a second input line here, which should be fine. Um, oh, by the way, the, the walkway here, it's going to actually be this row underneath the elevators coming down. Um, and it might be actually be both of these, although that one has the um, miner in it, so maybe just this one, but it doesn't really matter. The point is that this is going to be the ingot bus coming through right here with the elevators coming down uh, one next to it. Okay, so this is going to be three of these. Yes, three assemblers, which I think should fit here just fine. Two and three. Yep. And then what I'm planning on doing with this is, okay, so of course there's going to be a merger here. Again, centered. And it's going to go in that direction because it's going toward the bus. I think what I'm going to do is turn it back on itself because we need to make cable here and actually feed the cable from the bus. The reason being, um, cable, let me find the recipe here, uh, needs, because we're using the insulated cable, cable requires wire and rubber? Yes, wire and rubber. So the rubber is going to be coming from that direction. The wire is going in that direction already, so we might as well just kind of split it, turn it back on itself, and then take the rest of it up to the bus. Uh, and then have another assembler here facing in this direction. Might as well have it facing in this direction, I should say. And then that will be right there. That would mean uh, another space for a merger here. Going in that direction. Although it's not aligned with the assembler, but that's fine. And actually, I might end up putting this assembler down further in this direction so that when it comes out of this this merger here into a splitter say here uh merge splitters there we go there we go assuming this fits properly it may end up putting it further no it doesn't fit so um or or the belt could turn because turns okay, are okay as long as there's 90 degree turns. Input from this direction. And then go to the bus like this. Seven. That might be better. Just kind of go up and over this, um, this rock. Onto the bus. So I'll need to make sure that wire is, of course, at least that high. And then the rest of it can go along back this way to the assembler. Which in reality might end up being like right here. Instead of putting it all the way back down there. Or actually, it could even be, if I did it right, it could even be potentially this close, uh, wherever the line is, like this, and then uh, just insert it directly from the splitter. But either way, the spacing is what's important here, and that is there. Um, and then a merger for that, wherever it goes, or at least a lane for a merger, even though there's only one, I could just curve the belt, and I may just curve the belt, but at least a, a, a lane for that. And then that will take care of all of the copper and cutarium based products, I think. Let me double check my, oops, sorry, flinging the cursor around here. Uh, copper ingots are required for, uh, oops, copper ingots are required for fused quick wire. Oh, I forgot about all clad. Uh, all clad aluminum sheets and steam copper sheets and fused wire. Cutarium is used for fused quick wire, used wire. So let's do the all clad setup, which is also fairly simple. If I can find the recipe again, there it is. Uh, that's only two assemblers, so we have we have plenty of room for that here as well. Um, again, we'll leave a space for the splitter, and then this can go right there, and that'll be it for those. Let's uh, deconstruct, by the way, those two extra machines there. Or not extra, but you know what I mean. Um, and then having the merger be right here, just like before. And that going on to the bus. That'll be bringing in the, the rest of the copper, as well as the aluminum. 
The aluminum is coming down in the third hole right here. I suspect, I believe, I hope. So it's going to come down the bus a little bit, but that's fine. Yeah, that's aluminum. So, um, and then the last item we have is, of course, iron. Irons, or steel, rather. Uh, because both the plates and the rods are being made out of steel. So we need to have uh, start, start setting up steel. Which means it's going to actually take a bit more space, I think, probably, than uh, we had originally. Or, or yeah, we've, we've taken up a bit more space than we had originally because of the aluminum. So we have a little bit less space here, so we have to move some other stuff around. I'd already half taken apart the, uh, the uh, reinforced iron plates, so it's fine. Uh, so, so let's see here. We have... Steel coated plates, which are steel ingots and plastic. And then we have steel rods, which are just steel ingots. Uh, so I think maybe I'll put the steel uh, coated plates first. For those, we need two and a half assemblers. You know what? I may have a better idea. What if we do these both in the same line? Um. Because we only need one constructor making steel rods. For the entire base, we need 48 steel rods. Um, and most of those, actually 43 of those, so yeah. So we actually only need five steel rods. Um, most of those, and I'm just doing one constructor just because it's even one. Uh, most of those are uh, going into a box for us to have in the mall. So I think what I should do here, instead of what I was planning on doing is uh or i was thinking i was just thinking about doing is have the splitter here of course bringing in the steel ingots from there and then have a constructor here this is going to be further than three away um because it's here to compensate for the assemblers that are going to be next if i'm doing this right and these need to be lined up with the back of the machine, not with the center of the machine. And then I can just take, I think, uh, one, two, and then it's two and a half, so three assemblers making the uh, steel-coated plates. Steel-coated, not, there it is, steel-coated plates. Um, and then this one is steel rods. So actually this needs to get moved. And I'm assuming that is correct. Let me look at the back of this one here. Yeah, so it's the edge of the machine is almost to the edge of the foundation. And that's the case here as well. Uh, wait, you need to be moved first. So this is one off center in order to accommodate... In order to accommodate these guys. So it'll be kind of like that. And then that will take... That kind of space. And then this one will be a little bit different. We may have to have little short belts running into there, but I'm fine with that. And as you can see, I also moved my hyper tube here a little bit. So I don't want to get sucked into that. Even though it's kind of funny. Um, and then we'll have a merger here... Uh, which will probably be up on the third level. And then we'll have another merger here, which will probably be up on the fourth level. Um, not sure at this point. But uh, that'll that'll take in the rods, and uh, go, we'll be up enough that, um, that it'll go over top of the steel-coated plates. And I, so I think that's where we're actually going to kind of start today. Not that we haven't already been going for 19 minutes. But that's where we're going to start today because that's the piece we really need to hook up. Is the aluminum, or the aluminum, sorry, the uh, steel coated plates and the steel rods. First and foremost because we have only what's in my inventory uh, as far as plates go. And maybe a bit more rods that are randomly scattered throughout the rest of the base. But, um pretty close to being it at this point all right so let's let's 
We'll see about bringing down some steel. So we have one, two, three, four. Wait, one, two, three, four total products coming onto the ingot bus. So that's not too bad. We have the copper here on some level that I don't remember. One, two, three, four. Okay. So, um, so five can be catarium, six can be uh, aluminum, and then really steel could be back on four again because the copper is going to end at aluminum and the steel is only going to go as far as the two steel things. So I don't see the point in going any further. Before I stick myself in the foot here, though, let me make sure that that's all we needed steel for. Steel ingots for, that is. No, it's not. I totally forgot about steel pipes and steel beams. Um, so those are going to have to be after that. Um, but that's fine because... Um, that just means that the steel is... Oof. That's kind of messy. So we're already right here up against this rock. And now I'm going to have to take the steel um, at least this far. And probably further. In order to accommodate that. The alternative could be that... Alright, jump on top of the thing, Wally. Uh... Because there's only two of these that I could do some of the steel stuff out here. But I kind of don't want to. Um, these were the aluminum. Alkaline aluminum. And then next to that was the cable. So I could potentially do some of that out here. But I don't... Uh, I don't really want to. Um, so the, the, the other option might be to bring the steel down... Um, actually, no, the steel's going... This is the bus line here. So if I can get over top of this rock here, we might be okay. Let me see how high up I can go reasonably. Three, four, six. So the steel might just be higher just out of necessity here. Where am I? Oh, we're not even hitting the rock. I don't think. Eh, kind of down here. But... Let's see. Two, three, five, six. Yeah, we could go at level six and not actually hit the rock, I think. I just want to get this kind of right before we do it. I don't want to shoot myself in the foot later. Five, six. If we went from here to there, player's in the way. Yes, I'm aware that there's a player in the way. But the point is, you can see that it doesn't actually rub up against the rock. And that was kind of the point. Um, if we take this one out and we go down to level 5... Oh, good. The player moved out of the way. Uh, we also still aren't hitting the rocks. So I think we can even be on level 4 and be fine. Yeah. So... Whatever I want to put it on is fine. Um, okay, that that make, was a was a great relief to me because that means that this stuff can go here in line, nice and neat, and we don't have to worry about it. Let me delete these things here carefully. And this hypertube here is still uh, still temporary. It's gonna um, it's gonna be replaced, but I left it in just with it moving that one piece of it because I wanted to be sure that. I was done with it before I ripped it out. And it might be nice to be able to shoot myself down to that end of the bus easily. Alright, so let me get out of the way of the hypertube here. Uh, steel rods. I'm sorry, no. Uh, steel beams and pipes. We need 13 constructors making steel pipes. But only one constructor making steel beams. So let's figure out how, much, how many constructors can actually fit in this space. But just for... Uh, sort of posterity, we need to know that this one is a splitter for rods and or beams. And what I'll probably do is do the same kind of thing as we're doing here with the uh, rods, or sorry, p 
types of beams is is create the beams in the same row with a bunch of uh, if we need to do two rows, we think we're going to have to make one of the machines be beams and just go up to a different level and then have the other, the rest of the row be pipes. Um, I suspect there's going to be two rows, a double row of seven machines on each side just because I don't think we can fit 13 constructors or 14 constructors between here and where the bus is. And I think I want to leave the bus roughly where it is. So let's get started hooking up steel. So steel's going to come down. Um, I think we'll just put it on the fourth level. One, two, three, four. These are potentially temporary. Um, yeah, I think actually they are actually temporary, super temporary, like right now. Because I want to put one, two... Three, four. Because I think I want to have just a steel bus effectively and then everything else bus. Like everything else is going to come down in those three and work their way this way, ending. I didn't put a splitter in here. But ending roughly right there. So uh, the last support post would be like. Alright. Would be like here. And so steel might as well just end right here. But I want this one here because I want to climb it. Yeah, I think I want to climb this one. Uh, steel was a lot. Uh, let's see. Steel ingots. You know what? I thought of another recipe that might be necessary. No, never mind. Okay. Uh, steel ingots was... 481. So that's a high lift. High lift. That's a a um, high powered lift, but I guess I didn't need to know that right now. So I could just do a Mark 1 do wherever I need to go, which I think is right there. But I guess I should have done I should have fallen off the thing. That's key. And then I guess I should have done like this. One, two, three... And of course I missed. Because of course I did. Here. And right there. Perfect. Okay, so we don't actually need that. I don't think. Did I use one down there? Let's be consistent. How did I set up the copper? Okay, I did not put any sort of supports on the lift or the belt. I only supported the bus itself, and then the um, the belt is going to support the splitter, in theory. Alright, so that can come out now. And this power pole, or this power line here is still is also still temporary. Um, is this a problem? This is not a problem. That's good. Okay, splitter goes here. There. One, two, three, four and five make sure that's centered correctly make sure this is centered correctly it is and then this will come across and into there and then these guys will go away and this can go there and that one can go well maybe not there now that i think about it i think it just needs to go all the way to the end and then those guys can go to wherever they need to go when it's time for them to go there Alright, so I think it's fine to do this one like this. Let me climb the ladder. Do here. And then I can do the 90 degree curve perfectly like that. And then that should feed these guys what they need. Uh, so let's let's adjust the belt speeds now though. So we have 480 solid steel ingot, 481, which I think this was the one that annoyed me because, yeah, it needs to be a Mark V by one item. Mark V belt there, at least that far. 
That's already, yeah, that's Mark V. And then Mark V lift there. Uh, but, we add up some numbers here. Steel, coated plate, and steel rods only actually need 30.75 of that massive amount. So having a Mark I belt here all the way to the end here is perfectly fine. So let's uh, hook that up and we can actually start making the um, the rods once we connect power, of course. Uh, let's see, where do I want power? Well, let's see where this is going. How this is going to go. Uh, so from here, these guys need plastic. So from here, the plastic's actually going to come in from the other direction, coming from the bus. One, two, three, and I think I want that one on l uh, level f well splitter number four. And again, the reason being power lines. And that'll, of course, go in like that. And also, just for fun and profit, we make sure that it connects in and looks right. Yes, it does. There. And here. Perfect. Enough. Oops, one more. Okay, we'll delete those three. And these three. And then we need a splitter that goes here. And one that goes... Well, technically that one doesn't need to be one. We'll just go right... There. Because we're going to go straight into that one. Go there. 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 So now power poles can be out here. Which is a good place for a power pole, I think. Uh, yeah, I'll put one here. That can power both of those just fine. Uh, this one, though, I think I'll do a dedicated power pole here and here for those machines like that. Uh, eventually, the power is going to come from the bus, but I don't have power running along the bus this way yet. So I'm going to hook it up to what's over here, I think. Although, we do have power running along the smelting bus, so it could actually come from come from there. Then, this one can go... I think I'm going to have the power line for the smelting bus be here. Uh, the only qualifier would be if I were to put in fences here. Do the power lines care? And are the power poles care? Do the fences care? And the answer is no. For that, at least. But can I put... So I need to put the power poles in before I put the fences in. But that should be fine with me. So let's do a power pole here. Connected to there. And then just for temporary sake, I'll connect it right there. And that should get all these guys going. Uh, well, pulling in materials. Uh, 2.5 divided by 3 is what uh, number we're going to do here. 2.5 divided by 3 is 83.333 infinity percentage. So I'm going to do an 83. Another 83. And we'll put an 84 on this one. That'll give us that, that enough thing. And then we need to bring in the plastic for this. Plastic is up there someplace. I can't remember if it's on the top one or the bottom one. Um, I also don't know where plastic is going to be permanently. So I'm going to make this up. Kind of simply. Okay. Uh, top one. Okay. Down we go. Uh, really fastly. And taking some damage. Alright. Perfect. Uh, no, we're over here. We're over here, Wally. And then this can come this way. Get the bus. Input like this. I think that one is the correct one. It is. I think that machine is the correct one. Nope. Yes, it is. Okay. I'm going to leave the one below it just in case. 
Careful. Careful. And then I want to come down to uh, this level here, which is three stackables. So we'll just go over here, kind of like this. Maybe there. Three. I need to fix the belt here as well. This is a Mark III belt. Take that. There. Nice. There. Hope I did that correctly. That would be messy if I didn't. And the amount of plastic we need here for steel-coated plates is 13. Which is nice because I haven't built the new refinery yet. So the less we steal, the better off we are. But fortunately, everything else is not yet using, or it's not anymore using much. So we should be okay here. Bring that down. Connect that up there and once it makes its way down here we should have excellence going on uh, I can do that and this and this and at least start making and make 18 per cycle so it's a slow cycle but it ends up being a nice Output. Actually, it's... Yeah. Um, okay, plastic is coming in. They're not probably not going to throw any in the machines, but that'll be fine. Let's make sure the steel rods are done. Yeah, they're done. And these are just about ready to produce. And so I think that's where we're going to leave it for today. We have laid out our smelting bus here. Or our level 1 materials bus here. With our, along our ingots bus. And we are making steel rods and steel plates. And at least for now, I'm just going to steal them out of the machines when I need them. Uh, we don't need to grab more than 300 plates and 100 rods at, the, at a time, I don't think. So I think we're okay here. Uh, so thank you all for joining me. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.